Hey, my name is Jobby, and this guy is kind of a piece of shit. Baby, don't, don't. Big thanks to Hobby Link Japan for offering to pay for this figure. They haven't paid for the figure yet, they just offered. I still have to send them the invoice, that's a little too far behind the curtain. The box here is huge! This actually comes in a sleeve, and that's pretty cool. But just like the Meadow Build Evangelion Unit 1, check out that review if you haven't yet. Uh -huh. The size of the box is not indicative of the size of the figure, it's mostly accessories. And the box opens up strangely like a model kit. Box. Even going so far as to include runners and stickers. It's just like a Gundam. How is this possible? <laughs> I thought you were banished in the Great Snap! How oh, I'm here is no longer important. You have to bring out the cutting board and get to work, bitch! <laughs> nice shave, Alright, get the hell out. You can't... You can't just... You can't just say shit like that. That's not allowed. You don't want Benny to find you. You don't want Benny to find you, do you? God damn. The Gridman figure himself looks really good. The sculpted in detail is precise and accurate to the show, and the primarily metallic paint job is high quality. However, looks can be deceiving. This guy feels cheap as hell. There's no sort of weight here, he just feels really light and hollow, which is probably due to the fact that he basically is. While the plastic here seems to be pretty durable, the build quality here was not the best. I was going about my usual business, you know, whoop they do playing with this guy when suddenly one of his baby blue calves ripped off just completely popped off with no warning not too big of a deal a dab of loctite super glue fixed that right up and believe me i'm gonna be mentioning super glue several times and adding to the sense of cheapness is the limited articulation which includes a uh, ball joint rotation up down ball joint can also move down rotation moves out elbow rotation and right here another rotation and another at the oh nothing at all at the torso ball joint kick back spread thigh rotation knee and a hinge joint can't do much with this collection of joints and for a character that goes toe to toe with giant monsters this figure is pathetically tiny <laughs> Here's the Transformers Age of Extinction Dinobot Slug, Grimlock, Snarl, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and Strafe. The Transformers Age of Extinction Dinobots are actually relevant to Gridman. Smash that bell if you get it! Please engage with my video, I'm begging you! The absolute state of YouTube. I'm tired of giant characters being represented by tiny figures! I'm not even asking for anything super ginormous, although that would be nice. Just bigger than this. Which reminds me of a pre-order I made recently, look forward to that. Tiny boy Gridman here feels like he'd be worth 10 to 15 dollars easy. So I have to ask, how the F does all of this stuff total up to be that much? Well here's a little spoiler. It really doesn't. You get a base with a few different stand arms, but each of these serves a different purpose. For vanilla Gridman here, we'll use this basic stand arm. That plugs right into his back, has a hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint, and that's gonna let you milk every single drop of dynamic poses from this guy. And you also get a set of vehicles called the assist weapons, also known by their alter egos, the Neon Genesis Junior High students. Nice reference, Subaraya. I see you're also depressed. And I'm not pulling your leg 
bag here. In the show, these are people that can turn into vehicles. Or, in the case of Samurai Caliber, who's based on Dinobot Slug, a sword. And for Gridman to hold it, you get a pair of grabby hands. The fists come off really easy. Simply plug that into the hand, and there you go. Gridman Caliber. And for such a lightweight figure, he has no trouble at all holding this gigantic sword. But that wasn't always the case. Out of the box, the grip was pretty loose, but I tightened up that connection with just a little bit of super glue to make that little peg on the hand a little thicker. <laughs> now his grip's pretty good, I think. Shake test! <laughs> On to the next assist weapon, Vapotractor Max! So, who's the vehicle form of Max, the Grimlock of the group? He's supposed to be some kind of tractor tank thing, but he's so obviously just a pair of arms stuck together. But he's got a set of wheels, so that automatically makes him a vehicle, right? I'm being snarky for no reason, this thing looks cool. But this is where we get our first model kit bull poop. Sticker alert! These green parts. What was I supposed to do? Is either the stickers or painting the damn thing, I ain't got time for that. And each cannon has a hinge joint and a rotation. The plastic wheels do allow him to roll, but not that well. But it doesn't matter in the end because the assist weapon's main purpose is to be used and abused by Gridman. There's an offensive joke in there somewhere, but I'm not even gonna call the police. Remove this thing, split them open. This whole colored section and that red part are stickers. And this panel opens up, get Gridman into position, and the arms peg in. There's the hole, and here's the peg. Yeah? But I have to mention, the connection between the big arms to the smaller arms was pretty loose. Again, fix that with a little dab of super glue in the arm holes, just to increase the friction between the peg and the hole. Grab that thingy from the back of the truck, which is actually a helmet, and slide that right onto Gridman's face. Now take this pair of flexible cables, which were on runners and they don't go anywhere in any other mode, and that connects from the helmet to the shoulder. We could call that done if you're a little bitch. Or you could replace this pair of non-articulated hands with some articulated hands. And these hands were the most involved model kit element of the set. And I actually enjoyed every second of it. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Building's fun. And here we have the Max Gridman. This is a really cool looking form. And out of all the forms we're gonna see throughout the review, I'd say that Max Gridman is the best looking one. But the strange thing about this form in the show is that he's got these huge gorilla arms, but it's a kick? Enhancement? What? The figure's not posable to pull it off. This is the best I can do. I really like Max Gridman. Let's move on. The next assist weapon is Buster Boar. Who's the vehicle form of Boar, the snarl of the group? And hold on just a second, you dirty Shadman fans. That's a little boy. What are you, fucking gay? Not much to say about Buster Boar. It's a pretty cool looking double-headed drill tank. Each of the drills can spin and there's a little outward movement. The treads aren't real, but you do get a set of plastic wheels that allows him to roll. Not that great. Stick it in my Oh shit, I almost fell off my chair. These gray parts. Let's get bottom of Gridman. Take out this obvious helmet. The treads untab. Drills fold up. Split. Ratchet joint. And turn those around. Grab this clip piece, which has nothing to do with any other mode, and that attaches there. Position the treads, flip up this tab, and this thing is gonna plug right into Gridman's chest. The helmet opens up, which allows you to fit it onto Gridman's head. And Buster Gridman doesn't look too bad, but he is the weakest looking combination for sure. I understand why his helmet's so big, and you will too, but it looks so silly. And this isn't all there is to Buster Gridman. Flip out the treads, turn them around, and position the hand so it looks like he He's grabbing onto the handle. Flip out these red panels to reveal even more guns. And the shoulder drills open up. This will look so awesome if it wasn't for those... I'm not the biggest fan of stickers in general, but I absolutely hate folding stickers. Looks all crinkly and weird and makes the figure look even more cheap. But if there wasn't any stickers in there, it would look way too plain. Kind of a double-edged sword. Ah! Now our final assist weapon requires a stand. But instead of the basic stand arm, we're using this block. Plugs right into these two holes and we can place the actual vehicle on top of that. 
Shit. Doesn't plug in or anything, it's all just gravity. And here we have Sky Vitter. And this is the vehicle form of Vit, the strafe of the group. He's even got the little lapels, that's adorable. Definitely the most underdeveloped assist weapon in terms of characterization, I'm not talking about anatomy. But I find him to be the best looking assist weapon. But as you saw while I was setting up this guy, the cockpit here... Fuck, it's a bit of a loose fit. Believe it or not, it was way worse out of the box. I made it a little bit better with just a little bit of super glue, which I put on these little panels here so that it can hook on more friction. Doesn't work perfectly, but it's better than absolute shit. <laughs> Red parts. Red parts. Let's combine! Remove the front, the whole front, split, untap, point Gridman's feet down, and his legs slide right into there. Fold that back up to lock it in place. Out of the box, the connection here was pretty wobbly, but again, bit of super glue around the edges of that hole. Now it latches onto the calves, no problem. Now to keep them upright, you're gonna need this specialized stand arm. Plugs into the two holes at the base, and each of the legs plugs into the base. But we're not done yet. The front of the jet has these two pegs, and that's gonna plug into this hole and this hole. Attach the helmet onto the head. It's a ridiculously loose fit. And take these four entirely different cables, which were also on runners and have nothing to do with any other mode. The smaller cables connect the helmet to the back. That keeps the helmet somewhat in place. And the bigger cables connect the back to the legs. And here we have Sky Gridman. Great looking form, but there's just a lot of stability issues that I could do without, especially the freaking helmet, bitch. I like how the specialized stand keeps it upright, but it would have been pretty cool if it could pose just a little bit to display him at an angle. You could always remove him from the stand and flip out these feet so he could stand on his own. But the fold-out feet are more for his final combined form. Let's get into it, baby. Remove all the cables and the helmet. Fold up the wings. Fold out these knee spikes. And that allows you to extend the legs. Attach the max arms like before. Attach bore like before, you whore. <laughs> Turn the treads and fold them all the way up. Flip these parts out and that kind of locks everything in. Flip out this tab on the back and the instructions say to put this part on that tab, but there's no way. Absolutely no friction or plugging in at all. So you know what? Screw you, good smile company. I'm a rebel. We're gonna put this helmet on the tab and that slides in nice and smoothly and stays there. And then we plug in the cockpit where it was. Attach the helmet like we did with Buster Gridman. But now we can swing, take the caliber, remove the axe, flip it open, stick it in That little green gem, flip out this tab and that plugs right right into the chest. Slide the sword into the back for safekeeping. Doesn't plug in. Or put it in his hand. Doesn't plug in. And here we have Full Power Gridman. This mode looks ridiculous, but in the best possible way. It's really making me feel nostalgic for those combining mechs from the 90s. It's got that colorful mishmash look of the Megazord or Gaugai Gar. Of course, this design isn't for everybody, but you can't deny that he has some presence. And just like the combining robot toys from the 90s, his possibilities practically non-existent. Obviously, you can take advantage of what the base Gridman figure has, but trust me, you're not gonna get anything close to the box art. I guess you could count these ball-jointed heel fists as some pivot. Helps with stability. A big thing that full power Gridman is missing, besides the limited posability, is, well, the big. Here, Slug, Grimlock, Snarl, Strafe, and he barely comes up to Masterpiece Optimus Prime. That is way too small for my needs. So I lied a little bit earlier in the video. This isn't his final, final combined, combined form. All of the assist weapons can actually combine separately from Gridman. Take the helmet out and the back of the helmet unfolds to reveal a face. That looks awfully familiar. <laughs> Silver headpiece, four black parts. On the back of the board, you could fold up these tabs, and you could slot in the head. Replace these painted drills with these unpainted drills. Split max, fold up some feet, fold this up, slide out the back, and replace it with this hole. These hole pieces have nothing to do with any other mode. Now you're able to slide the drills into the holes. Split bit, flip up these pegs, and plug them into these holes. You can't rotate the arm, so you want to plug them in at the angle you want them to be. Purple. Purple. 
he can stand fairly well on his tiny feet, but if you don't want to take any chances, bring out the base, plug in this stand arm, and that pegs directly into the back. And this hole here lets you plug in the rest of it. Helmet it all. Grab the caliber, slide out this axe, flip it, and slide it right back in. Not the best fit, but... Twist the handle around, slide that into the hand, does not plug in. And here we have God-powered Xenon. Really basic ass 90s style combination. Not bad, but he's straight up a Power Rangers toy. Forget about posability. This guy is completely brick. No elbows, no knees. Him standing there with an axe looking kind of sad, mm. that's the best you're gonna get. I'm not super into it, but I don't hate it. But just like full-powered Gridman, too small. Slug. Grimlock, Snarl, Strafe, Prime, and Gridman. So before I get into my verdict, I need you to understand, I'm a huge Takara Bandai slut. You already know this if you've been watching my channel. So compare this to something like a Soul of Chogokin figure, this is basically garbage. But on its own, this entire set is not bad. Hmm. Good smile company, I'ma be real with you, Chief. If you're gonna make a model kit, just do it. If you're gonna make an action figure, just do it. Don't try to go half and half, because that's what this thing basically feels like, right? It's a pre-assembled, unfinished model kit. So I hope that SSSS Gridman does well in circulation, so that in 15 years, Bandai could come in and make a Soul of Chogokin version of this guy. Because I love this design, but this isn't the best representation of it. That's right. I love Bandai. Bandai makes me Please leave. Do you like shirts? Do you like pockets? Ah! Go on down to pocketpunch.com where we got a bunch of specialty pocket shirts. Including a Pocket Punch exclusive Jobby shirt designed by yours truly. And if you use promo code Jobby20, you can get 20% off of your order. Get them while they're hot.